Check out shares of Aurora Cannabis lighting up on the back of its earnings report last night. The company missing Wall Street expectations, but still posting a 20% jump quarter-on-quarter -quarter sales. Aurora now the best-performing pot stock this year, up more than 70%. For more on the earnings results and the state of the cannabis industry, let's bring in Michael Singer, executive chairman at Aurora Cannabis. Michael, thanks so much for joining us. We do appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Um, it's an exciting time in cannabis. You've got recreational sales going on along with medical. Where do you see that pie shifting to in a year or two years? And I guess embedded in that question is how do margins look once that shift occurs? Um, I'm presuming that medical marijuana has higher margins than the recreational side. So they do, yes. Our, our focus uh, is really right now in three different buckets. So we continue to build out our international footprint. Um, we're currently in 24 countries. We're, you know, the first uh, or, or first mover in each of those uh, or most of those countries. We see that as a tremendous opportunity where we have very limited uh, competition. And so for us, it's about uh, continuing to build out that global footprint. We're also focused on uh, the U.S. market. Uh, that's a market, obviously, that is too big to ignore. Um, we're, you know, we're, we're in the middle of creating a very unique uh, strategy so that we could leverage, obviously, everything in our uh, in our grasp so that we could take advantage of um, of course, uh, to some extent, two prongs that we, the, the way we look at that market. One is obviously CBD, and we want to certainly operate within the federal regulations that currently exist, and those obviously are very limited. Um, we expect those to expand over time. And, and through Australis, which is a company that we created uh, last year and spun out to our shareholders, um, Australis will play, and, and they operate as a small MSO in the U.S., they'll play a part in our overall U.S. strategy, and we're, sort of, we're going to leverage um, our relationship with Australis to ensure that we continue to deliver on a, mar a more global U.S. type strategy. Um, and third, and maybe most important, is we're continuing to explore a different number of partnerships with the help of Nelson Peltz. As you recall, we engaged Nelson as a strategic advisor uh, recently, um, and our relationship with Nelson is nothing but amazing. Um, Nelson is, as you know, a very thoughtful, experienced, um, and very strategic thinker. Um, and very well connected in the consumer goods uh, and ironically in the, or, or surprising to us, the, at least the pharma space. Um, you know, our model was very different than, than our peers, uh, where our peers decided to partner with one and potentially give away control of their business. We always felt the, the strategy for us was to uh, engage with multiple partners in different market segments. And so with the help of Nelson, we're exploring a number of potential partnerships uh, in some very key market segments. Are you, are you taking a swipe at acreage then? Do you, think no, that, do, you, do you think that deal was a bad deal? I mean, could you see <laughs> deals like that happen again? Is that some sort of template, do you think, for the industry? I mean, it's a deal we understand, of course. Is that a deal that, that, that makes sense for Aurora? Um, not at this time. Um, you know, our, our strategy is going to be a little different than that. For us, we don't feel it's necessarily important to pick one horse today. We're really looking across the entire value chain in the U.S., and we're looking at, uh, you know, opportunities that will help us determine where do we want to play along that value chain. And so we'll, we'll make decisions that are in the best interest of our company and our shareholders. We're patient, as we've always been. Um, and we'll ensure that when we make the decision to, uh, to operate in the U.S., it's going to be one where we see a long-term potential. Hey, Michael, it's Tim Seymour. Thanks for coming on. You know, we spent a lot of time talking about some of these, these new dot-coms that, that aren't making money. Should we be concerned about the cannabis, uh, you know, multinationals, and we'll call you that because you certainly are, um, that are not making money? Or tell us about the road to profitability. So our story is a little different. We put out some guidance very early in the year, um, and, and we put a stake in the ground that forced us to be very disciplined about yep. our business. Uh, we said, one, we were going to, um, uh, you know, obviously ensure that we, we were very careful about managing our expenses. Uh, and the stake we put in the ground was that in Q4, which is the April to June time frame, would, we would be uh, EBITDA positive. Um, based on the results we just delivered, our, our revenues are up, um, our margins are up, uh, our production volumes are up significantly. They've doubled uh, in Q3 versus Q2. Um, and based on the discipline we've, we've, uh, we've instilled in, in our, uh, for example, our SG&A, where we've, we've, to some extent, stabilized those expenses, um, and now with revenues increasing significantly, we feel we're, you know, we're on track to deliver um, positive EBITDA starting in the fourth quarter of this year. So that's a game changer for us. Our facilities are all coming online. We're, you know, our Sky facility is now operating at capacity. And so the volumes coming out of that facility will enable us to continue to tap into the different um, channels that, that exist for us. Of course, the Canadian medical, the Canadian recreational, and the European um, or the international medical markets are something that we're very focused on today. Should we expect some sort of deal or partnership with a major consumer products company given Nelson Peltz's involvement with your company? 
that's our end game, of course. Yeah. We expect we expect that we will, uh, uh, you know, that we will at some point um, uh, announce some type of partnership. What I could tell you is um, Nelson is incredibly engaged with us, um, and we're putting all resources to ensure that. The deals we make are the ones that make sense. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're actually prioritizing which of the market segments we want to participate in first, second, and so on. Uh, and so we're already engaging in those type of discussions. They take time. Uh, we're, we're, we're patient, um, but we're very excited about the, the, the status of those discussions. And of course, with Nelson and his team's involvement, um, they are uh, incredibly helpful and incredibly thoughtful about right. how we're thinking about our partnering opportunities. Michael, great to see you. Thank you. Michael Thank Singer, you. Executive Chairman at Aurora Cannabis. Tim? Uh, I would say Aurora's got the best track record, certainly uh, the track record of the most acquisitive out there. They filed a $750 million shelf recently, so you, sh you should look for them to do stuff. But again, being positive Q3 or Q4 uh, EBITDA-wise, that's impressive, and I think the market should reward that.